Hello and welcome back to the tutorial number two in the React Virtual Component series. In this tutorial, we are going to understand the files in the project structure. So let's start where we left off. This was a code component and we saw that it has a property pane and the code component actually looks like this. However, we need to understand the structure of our project. In fact, let me go ahead and stop this project from running and I'll just do control C and Y and terminate the bad job. So this is how our project structure looks like. The first folder is the node modules. This folder contains all the dependencies that are being installed by NPM. Typically, it includes libraries for React, TypeScript, Fluent UI, or you can say some PCF specific tools. <clears throat> so this is the out folder. This is the build output where your JavaScript gets compiled. The next folder is where the real magic happens. That is the React counter. We'll get back to it later. After that, you have the ESLintRC.json, which enforces the coding standard. So this actually helps you with the coding standard. Then you have the git ignore. The file specifies the files and the folders. For example, node module out folders should not be included or should be excluded from the version control. This is mainly used for git. Then you have the package.json. This file, you can find the dependencies. For example, in React, it is 16.14.0. And you also have the Fluent UI component. These are the dependencies which are required at the time of recording. You also see, if you have installed some other package, you will also go ahead and see the dependencies out here. That being said, the next would be the PCF config. It just has the output folder. And then you have the PCF proj folder, which actually defines the build process and integrates the MS build. Okay, you don't need to worry about all of these files. So I would say you need to worry about packet.json. And the next is you need to actually look into the React counter. This is where the real magic happens. So in the React counter, you have the hello world.tsx file, index.tsx file, and the control manifest.input.xml. So what is control manifest.input.xml? So the manifest file defines the metadata for the PCF control, including the properties, data sets, context, and much more. So let's quickly scroll from the top. First, it has the namespace out here, which is the namespace that we define. Then you have the constructor, you have the display name and the keys out here. Then if you are using external dependencies, you can uncomment this block. Similarly, if you are using external service dot usage, you can enable it out here. So here, if you see the property that we have defined, the name is sample property. And if I actually open the browser, if it's still there, you see, this is what it is. It is sample property. So let's say that this sample property, we rename it to name property, right? Uh, this is the display name key. This is the description. It, this is of type single line of text. Now, this is an interesting thing. So let me actually go and show you the types that are supported. In fact, if I want to see what type is supported, I can just hit this and this will introduce an error and I'll try to build it. So here, if you see, I introduced an error. It tells me that it can either be of type currency, date, time, uh, date only, decimal, which is a number and so on. So these types are supported. However, for us, what do we need is single line dot text, right? I'll use single line dot text. I'll just put it back in here. Now, sometimes introducing an error gives you the things that you're looking for. This is a bounded property. This is an input type property. And if and yes, it is a required property, right? Similarly, you can have other types of properties out here, which is commented. Then here you have the 
entry point for your project and it is index.tx. Here you have the platform libraries defined such as React and Fluent. If you want to go ahead and use CSS, which we will do in the later part of this demo, you can use the React counter.css. Now, if you look at here, we don't have a folder, so you need to create a folder named CSS and then add a file in it. Similarly, if you want to enable specific APIs for device, audio, or even use web APIs, if you are in the model-driven app, you will uncomment this section. Control manifest.inputxml is the file which helps you define the metadata and also define the properties that will be visible in the property pane. So as I told you, index.ts is the file which is the entry point. But before that, let's look at the hello world component. The hello world is a React component. It has an interface and we pass it a name for of type string, which will be displayed out here. Now, if we go back to our component again, you see that hello and power apps was passed into the component. It was not passed in from here, but it was passed in dynamically. So where was it passed in from? It was passed in from index.dx, right? So let's quickly look at the code for index.tx. So first and foremost, with index.tx, there are four important methods out here. One is the init, the update view, the outputs, and the destroy. Now, the init method is used to initialize the component. So this method kicks in when you actually start the component or initialize the component. So out here, the first thing that I do is I define the context and I use the notify output change. We will discuss the notify output change in a minute, but before that, we move on to the next method. The next method would be the update view method. The update view method is a required method. Init is required. This is also required. Understand that. You cannot just remove these methods and the update view method is called whenever something in the property bag updates, right? If you see, we have our component called in here as well. We create an element and we call the component and we pass in power apps out here. The output method is optional. For example, if you want to go ahead, if you have a business logic in your component or if you want to return some data, you return it as an output out here destroy is used to go ahead and clean up when the control is removed from the DOM tree, right? So that is what it is. Now, as I told you, here you see that I am going ahead and defining power apps out here. So my component is here. This was my entry point index and I pass in power apps. If I pass in Claven out here, this will go ahead and show Claven. So let me go ahead and actually see if I can build it. If you remember, I also changed the name of the property. Instead of sample property, it is known as the name property right now. So this should also render. So it built without error. So let me do a start watch. And if you see now, the property pane has changed to name property. And now I can see Claven. Now, what if I want to type in something out here and this gets updated out here? How can I do that? So let me go ahead and stop the execution again and we will go ahead and configure it right now. So I go to the index.ts file. What I do is I can actually remove this. And if you remember, the update view method is called when a property in the property bag updates. So I have the context out here. The context is usually used to access the variables in the property bag, right? So I can go ahead and access parameters. And what parameters do I have out here? The parameter that have is the name property. And I can access it as raw. Now, there 
is an error out here. It tells me a string is not null, is not assignable. So what I can say is that if it's that, that's okay. Or else I will just pass it power apps, right? It was power apps previously. So I'll say this, I'll save my file and I'll run my component out here. I'll build it and I'll start watch it. Perfect. So if you look out here, it shows me hello Fernandez because Fernandez is out here and I can actually say in Claven Fernandez as I type it is visible. If I remove this and if I refresh my component, it shows me hello Val because it has something in it, right? You're only if it was empty, then it would have shown power apps. And that's pretty much it. So here, my friends, you have understood the file structure. You have understood the methods that come into consideration, initialization, updating the views, and how update view method is triggered every time something changes in the property bag, as well as you understood the important file that is the control manifest dot input file where you can define the properties in the property bag. And then we saw how a component, this particular hello world component is been called from the index dot TX method. And we'll focus on other elements of your react component. Thank you. Bye bye.